1995, I was the head of our delegation for the Beijing Conference. The, I was obviously representing the United States delegation. And when we got back, we were called to the White House, and, and it was suggested uh, emphatically that we try to get more women to the table. The Fourth World Conference had uh, women from all over the world through the United Nations, and I started an organization called Women's Campaign International. We were first funded, interestingly, by, I'm, I teach at the University of Pennsylvania, we were first funded by Annenberg, which is where my where I work, um, and that was in 1998. We, we moved ahead full blast, and since then we've been in about 50 different countries, and what we do is we empower women. We can do it at every level. We do it with great enthusiasm. We do a lot of listening. In other words, we will, USAID or State Department or uh, 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 other groups will call us and say, uh, the, the, there are women's organizations and groups in this country, X, Y, or Z, and uh, would you, can you come and do what amounts to training? Sometimes it's a series of training, sometimes it's, we're, we're there for a long time. Uh, it depends on what, what the grant is. We do a lot of, a lot of um, back and forth and, uh, and keeping in touch with the, the communities that we, we do a GALS program, which is, uh, um, Girls um, Advocacy Leadership Series, and we do that. And when COVID happened, because we couldn't move around the world, we built up our GALS program in the United States. And then we do a lot of exchanges. We, we try to, the girls um, sometimes become pen pals. They sometimes will talk, although that's difficult because it's three o'clock in the morning in some of the places <laughs> that our gals want to communicate. But that's what WCI does, and we are now trying hard to figure out the communities at mo most at risk. We, we've been in Afghanistan for years and we're still trying to get some of our women out. We were lucky enough to get some of the women from our offices out, um, but we're still trying to. And we're talking about doctors and lawyers and professors who are in hiding. And um, we, are, we tr send over funds just to feed them. And we know how to do that. So we've, we're, we're now, of course, in, uh, in Ukraine, and, and that's, that's what WCI does. And it's, it's, it's just hugely um, challenging, it just, but we're, we're there, and we're working hard. And we learn with each of, of, of our visits, our trainings. We also work with women farmers. So, I mean, it's, we go from the very top the, you know, we, we try and double the number of women in Parliament, but we also work with women farmers, and then everything in between. So I mean, it, even when we work with women in, in, in Parliament, we'll say, okay, how, how do you A, stay, and B, what are, the, what are the, some of the laws that you would like to create that are going to help families and women, and especially little, young girls, to be educated? That's, that's an area that, we, that we're very sensitive about. When I was elected to Congress, it was the first year of the woman, 1992. Um, and it was pretty, for those of you who are listening, who you remember Newt Gingrich and the contract for, I, I, we always said the contract on America, the contract for America. It, there was such divisiveness and it had started a little, but it really grew with, with this contract. Um, and and that's when the Republicans took over in 1994. And it's been, it's been a very um, challenging and growing and negative conversation. I, I'm, I'm always looking for the sane center, for the moderate middle. And right now in the United States, there is none. It's just such, and, and the words that are being exchanged are so negative. And I just think that we've, we've got to move to working together. Um, as a former member of Congress, we sometimes will go to places with Democrats and Republicans. And when we sit around and kind of get to the middle, there's so much there, there's so much richness. And we are always saying, why can't we get this kind of thing done? It's very frustrating. And even more frustrating to me as somebody who, had star who started out as a journalist, 
the, the amount of fake news and destructive conversation and meanness to me is, is appalling. And I mean, I sit there saying, come on, this is silly. You know, what, what, what is happening? Now, when I was a journalist so really long ago, I mean, we, we worked through the whole day and got, tried to get both sides. Sometimes that was challenging. But now, because of instantaneous news operations and the meanness of, of so many of them, it's, it's a very different ballgame. Why one comes to something like this it's because the quality of the people here are, are, are legendary. I mean, these are the people who can move mountains if they want to. And it's, so it's, it's about having conversations with folks who then can often say, well, let me introduce you to X, Y, or Z. Um, something mildly interesting happened. <laughs> um, Last week, I met with the people who are running UNESCO in New York at the UN, and one of the gentlemen said to me, we're looking for interns. Well, that's just a fabulous, rich, the possibility. So when I talk to somebody here, and it becomes clear to me that they have kids who are graduated from college or something like that, or who would be interested in this international, the heritage sites, so I've already said to a couple of people, would, you know, would your kids be interested in an internship with, um, with UNESCO? And the reaction has been, oh, wow, yes. And, and that's, that's what these kinds of meetings are all about. It's about networking. It's about figuring out what, if you're talking to, although it's very hard to do, what, what the future looks like through the, the lens, through the eyes of these folks who have been quite successful. Um, and also who were trying really hard to figure out how important it is for their families to pay it forward.